handsome property on Stewart Island, which has been presented to the people of New Zealand by Miss Noeline Baker, was recently accepted on behalf of the nation by the Minister of Lands, Mr. Skinner. Miss Baker, in handing over the residence, points out the lovely view which can be seen from the house. The residence is to be used by forestry and botany students as a base for their studies of bird and plant life in Stewart Island. The furthering of knowledge of this country's natural history will be greatly assisted by Miss Baker's generous and gracious gifts. An empty section which might be at the corner of any street in New Zealand. Look closely. This section's covered with hemlock, which is deadly poisonous. Hemlock may be either a small shrub on the roadside or a plant up to eight feet high. It was first observed in New Zealand in 1872, and you'll find it mostly in disused pasture in the country and in wasteland in the towns. This weed's a killer, as dangerous as they come, mainly because human beings eat it in mistake for parsley. Stock usually dislike its fetid odor. Children are most likely to make a tragic mistake, and it was at a let's pretend tea party like this one that three-year-old Carol Reed of Auckland ate what she thought was parsley. She recovered due to her mother's quick action in calling the doctor. But Carol, seen here, won't eat hemlock again. These children are handling the most famous poison plant in history, hemlock, which killed Socrates nearly 2,500 years ago. Conine, the poison hemlock contains, causes gradual paralysis and finally death. Only vigilance by adults and older children will stop tragedies happening in the garden. Hemlock isn't at all like parsley or carrot, really. Here is parsley on the left, hemlock in the center, and carrot on the right. Hemlock is fern-like, and the leaf is flatter than the other two. Wild parsley sometimes grows amongst hemlock. This is parsley with a clean green stem. But this is hemlock the stem spotted and streaked with purple. If you see these purple spots, it's hemlock. At the domain Miani, the local young farmers sports club holds a rodeo. An extensive system of corrals and release chutes was built by the club members and a crowd of 6,000 awaits the first wild bronco buster. Cowboy, your horse is gone. The double banking event gives a keystone comedy touch to the occasion. There's no end to the tricks a mean horse can think up to unload a passenger. Another cowboy bites the dirt. Two game competitors, the Surrey sisters from Masterton, take some heavy spills and provide a novel finish to a highly successful rodeo. Another addition to Christchurch industry, and a welcome one for New Zealand motorists, is the erection and operation of a tyre factory at Papua Nui. Large modern machines, many of which were made in this country, are operated by a staff of nearly 300 workers, and are producing 500 tyres a day. Crude rubber from the plantations of Malaya is put under cutters, which slice it down into workable size and shape.
Rubberized fabric emerges from the mill and is cut and measured for size according to whether the tire will be a big one for a truck or a small one for a baby car. With an inflated tube inside, the tire is put under the forming machine and pressed into shape. Near the end of the process, the tread is vulcanized on. The better the tread, the better the tire. To grip the smooth asphalt at high speeds on main roads or to negotiate the narrow metal country roads. Here is a sensible way of solving a shortage. Instead of using up valuable dollars on imports, we build a factory and use our machines and skill to produce the goods we need.